What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Python data structures tutorial series. In this video today, we're going to implement the queue data structure. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to implement the queue data structure from scratch in Python today. And as always, I want to start by giving you a brief theoretical explanation of the data structure. So you know what it is that we're implementing here. And for this, I want to use my paint again. So in the last video, we talked about the stack data structure and the stack was just a bunch of blocks of data stacked on top of one another. And we had a top of the stack. So we had a top element um, of the stack. And the three major operations were I can push new stuff onto the stack. So I can take a block of data and put it on top of the stack, I can pop stuff out of the stack. So I can take the top element, remove it from the stack, or I can just look at the top so I can just see what's there by peeking at the stack. And this principle of pushing something on top of it, and taking that element as the first element to be popped when we use the pop operation. Um, this is the LIFO principle. So this is last in first out the last element I push on top of the stack is the first one to leave the stack when I use the pop operation. Now the queue is exactly the opposite of that the queue says first in first out. So a queue operates according to the first in or FIFO principle first in first out principle. So it's literally a queue like a queue of people you have a front and what you can do is you can enqueue elements. So the operation here is called enqueue like this. And let's say at the front, we have a block of data, and then we have another block of data and another one. If I now want to enqueue an element, what I do is I just put it at the rare end of the queue. So whatever I put into the queue, whatever I enqueue is added to the rare to the end of the queue. And when I use the DQ, operation, I take the element from the front. So whatever enters the queue last is also whatever enters the uh, whatever leaves the queue last and whatever enters the queue first is whatever leaves the queue first. So it's literally like a queue when you are in a restaurant or something. So this is the first in first out principle and we still have stuff like peaking. So we can still look at the next element to be dequeued, we can still do a peak, but that's the difference here. We don't have the LIFO, we have the FIFO principle, whatever enters the queue first is also the first thing that leaves the queue. And that is a different data structure. This is a different uh, way of working with data. And it also requires slightly different implementations here. So let us get started with the code, we're going to create a new file here, q.py. And we're going to uh, still based this around a note. So we're still going to say here that we have a class note and this note has a constructor, which takes a value. So this is going to be the value of the note. Um, and the note is also going to point to the next note. So it's also going to have the next reference here, which is going to be set to none by default. So that stays the same. This is not too special here. Now, the difference between a queue and a stack is that we also now keep track of the rare end of the queue because we need to append new elements to the rare end of the queue. And we need to pop them out or we need to dequeue them from the front. So we need to have a front reference and a rare reference uh, for this to make sense. So we're saying here now class Q. And this class Q has a constructor. And uh, this constructor says the following self dot front is equal to none self dot rare is equal to none. And self dot size is equal to zero. Just so we can make the length calculation quite easy. So we can just say if I have the, uh, the dunder length, I can just say, return self size. Now, of course, I need to keep track of the size, I need to increase it and decrease it accordingly. But um, this is not too difficult here. Every time I enqueue something, I just add one. And every time I dequeue something, I remove one. Um, besides that, let's also go for a representation dunder. So for the string representation of that, I'm just going to pass for now. So I'm just going to define the methods that we're going to need. We are going to obviously need an enqueue method. So enqueue self and value. We are going to use DQ as well. 
And this kind of data structure is obviously very useful. For example, I have some tutorials where I did that. Um, you have connections or elements to process. Maybe you use 10 threads or 10 processes to, to do something and you don't want to process the same elements twice. So you have a queue and the next element to be processed is not from a list where you have to work with the indices. You just take the element out of the queue and then the next process cannot take the same element because it's no longer in the queue. That would be a uh, use case for, for the queue data structure. Um, as I said, we're going to use the peak method as well. Or the peak, yeah, the peak method. Um, actually, we don't need a value here for DQ. Sorry about that. And we're going to use something like is empty, which is optional, but let's just implement it. All right, so how do we do these things? We're going to do this one later on. Let's focus on enqueuing and dequeuing. Now, enqueuing is quite simple. What we do is we create a new node. And the new node is going to have the value. And what we do with this new node now depends on whether we have something in the queue already or not. So if self.rare is none, this also means that self.front is none because if I only have one element, it's going to be the same. So if there is nothing in the queue, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say self.front is equal to self.rare is equal to, to a new node. So I say the front and the rear are the same object, new node. If, however, I already have elements in the queue, so else, what I do is I say self.rare.next is going to be equal to new node. And then self.rare itself is going to be set to new node. So basically, maybe if we look at this graphically, I'm going to use my mouse now, so this is not going to be very... Uh, beautiful. If I have here F for front, and if I have R for rare, if I have nothing, these are pointing to none. If I have one element, like this block here, both are pointing to this element. So my front and my rare element are the same. Uh, and if I now add a new node, what I have to do is I have to say that this is still pointing to this here, right? So I have to say that this thing has to point now to the next element, but also I want to reset the pointer of rare. This is difficult with the mouse. Uh, I also want to reset the pointer of rare to be pointing to this new node. So this is exactly what we're doing here in the enqueue method. And of course, don't forget to set the size or to increase the size by one. That's it. That's the magic of enqueuing data. Dequeuing now is obviously also not too difficult. What we do is we take the element from the front. Now, if there is no front element, we raise an exception. So we don't want to have um, any call to dequeue if the queue is empty. So we're going to say if self.front is none, if that's the case, we raise, let's say, an index error. Now, I'm always not sure which one of these errors is the correct one, but I think index error makes sense here. So let's say queue is empty. Otherwise, what I want to do is I want to say the DQ value is equal to self.front.value. So I get the value of the first node of the queue. And then I say that my front element should now be pointing to the next element. So I say self front is equal to self front next. This could be none, of course. Um, and now if self.front is um, none as a result of that. So if I'm actually pointing to none now, then rare should also be none. Uh, yeah, this makes sense. Um, and of course, every time we want to say self dot size minus equals one. So again, what's the idea here? If I have uh, this structure here, now let me actually use my drawing tablet here because otherwise this doesn't look very, very good. So if I have this structure here, I'm pointing to this as my rare node. This is my front node. If I just take this out of the queue now, I say that my front element is now pointing to this directly. And if I remove this as well by dequeuing it, then my front element, of course, points to nothing now. So to none. But this one still points to something else. So I also need to make this point to none. That's the basic uh, idea of what we're doing here. Dequeuing means size minus one, and queuing means size plus one, okay? And peaking is quite simple. All we have to do in order to peak is we have to 
copy this and basically instead of uh, storing it, we can just immediately return it. So I can just say return self front value. That's it. We don't need to do anything. And is empty is actually quite simple. Uh, simple. We just say return self front is not. That is the queue data structure. That's basically it. There's nothing too difficult about this. We just have, I mean, actually, we need to implement the representation dunder, but that's basically it. You just go through, you don't even have to go through the elements because you just use the front or the rare to do stuff. We're going to talk about the runtime complexities here in a second. But let's briefly implement the representation dunder, we're going to say items is going to be equal to an empty list, we're going to say current item is going to be equal to self front, we're going to say while current item is not none. We're going to just uh, append it to the items list, and then we're going to move to the next one. So we're going to say items append, and then uh, we're going to append the string version of the current item dot, uh, dot value. And we're going to say current item equals current item next. And in the end, we're going to say return comma join items. I think this should work. And now let us talk about the runtime complexity. Now, obviously, the length function, the length dunder has constant runtime complexity, because all I have to do is I have to look at the value, I just have to call a single variable. If I have 5 million elements in the queue, this doesn't change, I just have a different number, I just have a size of 5 million. But that's it, I just have to say, okay, look up the value, return the value. So that is obviously in constant time, which is the best thing that you can have. Now, the representation dunder is in linear time. Why? Because I have to go through all the elements, I have to go through every single uh, note in the queue to get all the elements. So to print all of them, I have to iterate through all of them. So in the best case, worst case, average case, this is an O of n linear time. In queuing an element, these are now interesting, because these are the main operations in queuing an element is also done in constant time. Why? Because all I have to do is I have to look at the rare and I have to append an element. Now, maybe I have to also adjust the front, but that's not really that much of an issue. So this is done in constant time. There is nothing difficult about this, I just have to look at the rare and I have to append if there is already a rare, otherwise, I just have to create the first element of the queue that can be done with the same amount of uh, effort, regardless of how many elements I have, if I have 5 million elements, all I have to do is I have to go to the last one, which I have a pointer to a reference to, all I have to do is I have to append a new note there, I just have to create the next reference to a new note, always the same effort. And of course, you guessed it, this is also the case for dequeuing, because all I have to do, even if I have 5 million elements, it doesn't matter, I just take the first element from the front of the queue. And I remove it, and I adjust the front pointer. That's the same action I take every single time, regardless of if I have five, 5 million or 5 billion uh, elements in the queue. So that is O1 constant time. Peaking trivially as well, all I do here is I just look at the first element, I just have to call uh, or not call, I have to go to the reference and look at the value. That's it. Uh, and this empty is also done in constant time. So you can see that these operations are quite um, efficient. All of them are done in constant time. The only thing that takes linear time is iterating over all the elements. But of course, if you want to iterate over all the elements, you have to iterate over all the elements, which is n. So um, this is going to be linear. So that's it. Let us go and try some stuff. So let's say, if name equals main. Uh, and now we're going to create a queue, the queue is going to be a queue. And uh, we can play around now with queuing, dequeuing. So let's just say Q and Q uh, 10. And then I can just say 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Um, and then I can print the queue. I can print the length of the queue to see that the dunder works. Uh, and I can print or actually I can say Q DQ, and I can print these elements, 
then I can print the queue again. And also the length. And what I get here is I get 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Then the length of the queue is six, correct? Uh, queue DQ, none. Why is that? Let me see what the problem is here. Maybe I'm not returning. I think I'm not returning, right? Yes, of course, we need to return the DQ value. Otherwise, this doesn't work. There you go. I mean, it still pops it out of the queue, but it doesn't show it. So 10, 20, 30, which are the first elements I added to the queue are the first elements to leave the queue. Now I have 40, 50, 60 left and three is also the correct length. So there you go. This is the implementation of a queue from scratch in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.